the gospel text of today which is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 is one of the most beautiful texts that one can encounter in the scriptures. In Ignatian spirituality, there is a way of meditating and I would suggest that even as I speak, you use this way of meditating. If you can close your eyes, even as you listen with your ears, you will be able, I hope, to understand more deeply. The text from Luke is known as the walk to a mouse. And the reason why I ask you to close your eyes is because I would like you to imagine yourself in the context of the two disciples. And the reason why you can do this easily is because Luke gives us later, not at the beginning, but later only one name. He does not tell us and never tells us who the second disciple was. Later he tells us that one of the two who walked was Cleophas. And you can be the second disciple. Even as you are walking with Cleophas, this is what I suggest you go through. Jesus very clearly has told the disciples when he was alive that no matter what happened, no matter what the outcome of his trial would be, they must never leave Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the place in which everything that had to happen would happen. A walk away from Jerusalem whether it be to a mouse or any other place, is a walk away from obedience to disobedience, is a walk away from hope to lack of hope, is a walk away from the positive to the negatives. So as you walk with Cleophas, Imagine those times in your lives when you were despondent, when things were not going according to the way you planned, when all your plans fell down, where there seemed to be absolutely no future, no hope. It could be the terminal illness of a member of your family. It could be the lack of job. It could be a break in your relationship with each other. It could be the children going astray. It could be whatever negative experience you have had. And you are walking along with Cleophas. You are moving away because you say, what is the use? I have always been obedient to the Lord. I have been a regular church goer. I go to the Eucharist every day. I recite my rosary regularly. I pray so often. I visit the Blessed Sacrament. I have really not committed any mortal sin. I am a good person. I am a nice person. And why does the Lord have to do this to me? Does it make sense to believe? What is the point in continuing to believe in this God who has revealed himself in Jesus when nothing seems to be going right with me? And you along with Cleophas walk to your mouse. And a mouse is not necessarily a place. A mouse can be a habit which you have given into. Maybe the habit of overconsumption of alcohol. Maybe the habit of smoking. Maybe the habit of taking drugs. Maybe whatever negative or even overeating. And you think that that will satisfy you. 
and you think that that will cure you. You think that that will help and you give in to that habit. And even as you walk with Cleophas, the Lord walks with you. But because your eyes are filled with the negative, because there is a film before your eyes, you are unable to see and recognize the Lord. And because you have put stoppers in your ears and don't want to listen to any advice except your own and what you would like to do, you cannot hear the Lord. And even as you walk, the Lord asks you, about what has happened and why you are moving where you are going. And in your anguish, you look at the Lord in surprise. And you are surprised that he does not understand, that he does not know. You are surprised that the Lord is asking you a question about your despair, when it should be so evident that you should give in to despair. And you explain to the Lord. You give the Lord your life story. You explain how you were so trustworthy. You explain how you were so faithful. You explain how you so loved the Lord. You explain how everything was going so well for you for such a long time. And now everything is falling apart. And even as you do that, the Lord listens to you. And then begins to explain to you his own life. He begins to talk about his Godhead. He begins to talk about the fact that he could have clung to that equality with God and never become a human being. He tells you that he could have saved you and saved the world in another way without the incarnation. He tells you that there was no need for him to be in the womb of his mother for a period of nine months. To be so vulnerable, to be spit upon, to be hit, to be whacked, to be crucified, to be put in the tomb. He tells you there was no need. And yet he tells you he obediently, he deliberately, he knowingly did all of that because of love and because he believed in the Father. The Father made a promise to him. And even though on Monday, Thursday, it could not be seen. Even though on Good Friday, it could not be seen. Even though on Holy Saturday, it could not be seen that the promise would be fulfilled, that God would be true to his word. On Easter Sunday, it became a reality. On Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. On Easter Sunday, God's promises were true. And he tells you that you are having now your Monday Thursday. You are having now your Good Friday. You are having now your Holy Saturday. But if you dare to do what you have to do, if you dare to take steps to improve, if you dare to move back to Jerusalem and move away from despair and hope, then he tells you that you will have, according to the promise of God, your own Easter Sunday. And then you sit at table with him. And even as you sit at table, he breaks bread. And you recognize in that one action, the summary of his life. You recognize his own brokenness for the world. You recognize his own giving of himself to the world. You recognize that he fed 5,000. You recognize that he fed 4,000. You recognize that he is the bread of life. And your eyes are open. And your ears are open. And your heart is open. And at that very instant, at that very instant, without delay, Without holding back, you return to hope. 
You return to Jerusalem. You return to where you ought to be. And so today, on this day, and on other days, when we are tempted to walk to our own Emmaus, when we are tempted to go from hope to despair, when we are tempted to give up and throw in the towel, let us see the Lord walking with us, let us hear the Lord guiding us, and even if there are times when we reach a mouse, let us know that we come back to Jerusalem with his strength. I pray that today and every day, when you are tempted to walk to a mouse, you might reach there if you have to, but then come back to Jerusalem and stay in Jerusalem always.